welcome to another fun-filled episode of... The Vinyl Challenge. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, this time, because we have our lovely Gala with us this time, it's not just Victoria and I, uh, and it doesn't have to be tacked on at the end here, we did three albums to kind of keep this as brief as possible. Oh, and shit, I pulled five. <laughs> I thought you we were. You got a beeper in there? Also, I didn't pull any. I'm just here. Oh my God. <laughs> Your pull out method is terrible. <laughs> well, I do have three uh, kids, so. <laughs> so we thought we were doing five because Gayla wasn't oh going to do God. any. I thought we were doing three because I thought she was doing three as well, so mm -hmm. I only did three. Do you know how hard. You know how much I cussed to you today? <laughs> Why? He blew with his phone. Because we had to narrow it down. Oh, that's right. There was two that had to get cut, and that was heartbreaking. But I picked one of these. So technically, one of so, them is mine. So, so how about give, I just give you that so one? Give, so give her two and let her do... <laughs> but I only know what... Well, I, technically, okay. I know what two of them are. Okay. Anyway, so... So anyway, this was uh, th three records that we are thankful to the artists for having made. Uh, if they were standing in front of us today, we would say, hey... You know, I love your body of work, but this particular album is I'm my I'm so favorite. grateful that you made this album in particular. Exactly. I thought you were going to say I love exactly. your body. <laughs> well, yeah, you would say that. You would also say that. but I guess I'm going first because I have five yeah, albums. Yeah, you go first. Ladies first. All right. So, first up in my bag, <laughs> and this album I am thankful for. This is Further Seems Forever. The moon is down. This is... Uh, I think it was put out in 1997. It was put out in 2000. Okay, so this album was put out in 2000. Everyone knows the 90s lasted until 2004. Did it? That's weird. Okay, so anyway, this album is one of the original like emo albums. Um, it had the singer Chris Caraba, who went on to start Dashboard Confessional after this album. And yeah, I listened to this album so many times that you can barely recognize the songs on them anymore. And I saw this amazing YouTube video. I was going to tell you about this. We should do this for the vinyl challenge one, one month. You get wood glue and you cover a record in wood glue. And then once it dries, I know it sounds crazy. You peel it off and it repairs the record. Oh, nice. So anyway, I might try that on this record because I love this record so much. So further seems forever the moon is down. Dashboard Confessional, isn't that like a, an HBO series? Taxi Cab Confessional. Taxi Cab. <laughs> My bad. Don't sue. My first record that I'm thankful for is Hopeless Romantic by The Bouncing Souls. One of my favorite bands. Uh, they've been around for, what, 30 plus years now? Uh, this is my favorite record, I think, that they've done to date. Uh, it's also one of their earlier records, but this, we saw them back in the late nineties yeah, at the Little way, House, way back in the day. And they dressed like hippies. Yeah, when they dressed like hippies, and they had that that god awful band that uh, mm -hmm. that was so beautifully covered in all those stickers. I love it. Uh, and I also had an opportunity to see them on their thirtieth anniversary tour, uh, which was amazing. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's definitely this this record. This is a stick with you kind of record, and it's uh, it's full of good tunes. Very nostalgic. Um, gotta love it. Hopeless romantic. The next album I have is. I knew that was coming. Uh, Motley Crue shout at the devil. I picked this record because this is a romantic album. <laughs> my husband. Likes, my husband likes to romance me to this album. Ask my old roommate Jason. He wouldn't come upstairs if he heard this album on the record player. My husband requested I show you the fold out because he's sitting over there. But, uh, wow. Oh my God. If that doesn't put you in the mood, I don't know what else does. That does not put me in the mood. I'm just going to say. But it's, you know, do you. You do you. <laughs> so, Molly Cruz, Shout of the Devil. I'm telling you, put it on. You get romantic. It happens. <laughs> Number two. On that note. I have yes. the Dead Milkman, Beelzebubba. So, <laughs> Speaking of Satanic Panic. <laughs> I, I laugh every time somebody says that. So this, first of all, the album cover is fantastic. If you can see it without the, the glare there. You got Bubba here 
next to his tractor with his big giant cigar. Cigar. Uh, this album is this is like a fusion of punk rock and comedy. Uh, that's all you can really say about the Dead Milk Man. It's like what they did. They were so not good. They were not good musicians. <laughs> they they couldn't play their instruments. Later on, they learned how to play their instruments. But at this time, which this is... People said that about the monkeys. Well, the monkeys rocked. Yeah. I like but, the monkeys. But you're right. They, they, 19, this is 1988. This came out in 1988. So in 1988, they could not play their albums. But they had great, great songs. Um, like Punk Rock Girl was a, you know, a great one. Smoking Banana Peels. Uh, Born to Love Volcanoes is a good one. Life is sh <laughs> Yeah, Life is Shh. Um, but that's not on this one. No. That one's not on this one, unfortunately. This is, um, uh, I, I think that was Big Lizard in My Backyard. But this is probably one of my favorites. So it, I had to fight, I had an internal dialogue as to whether or not to bring this one or Metaphysical Graffiti, which is also... I believe more comical than this one is, but uh, definitely if I had these fools from Philadelphia standing in front of me, I'd have to give them a hug and say, hey, thanks for Beals and bye-bye. I didn't bring any records, <laughs> but I suggested this one because I have so many fond memories of riding around in the vehicle with Victoria listening to Patsy Cline, particularly Today, Tomorrow, and Forever, and Honky Tonk Merry Go Round, which I have that album on vinyl at my house, and I didn't bring any records, so here we are. We used to always listen to Patsy Klein and Etta James, and just uh, ride around and digging trash. And, and Amy Winehouse. And yeah. Nico. Uh, oh yeah, God. and Nico. I almost pulled uh, Amy Winehouse's... Uh, Back to Black. Back to Black, yeah, that was the one I was going to bring. But then Yeah, I thought about it too. Because I'm, a, I'm a definitely an Amy Winehouse fan. Yeah. So, Patsy Klein. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, I have, should I do, I don't know. Because I pulled five, so. I mean, how do you follow up <clears throat> Motley Crue? New Kids on the Block, hanging tough. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I'm being serious. I know you are, which is why it's hilarious. I still like, you're not going to pull another Richard Marks on me. I almost put Richard Marks in here. <laughs> that would have been Gala's other choice. So, New Kids on the Block, Hanging Tough. I still own all their VHS tapes. <laughs> and the dolls. And all my Barbie dolls. <laughs> I, own, um, I own all my cassette tapes. I own a big giant button of Joey McIntyre, but best of all, I own a Joey McIntyre pillowcase. So I have a funny story. Josh was chef at this really nice fine dining restaurant in one of the casinos where we live, and uh, New Kids on the Block was uh, performing at the casino, and they were going to eat at his restaurant. And as the chef, he has to go out and table touch, which means you go out and talk to the guests. So I said, Josh, can you bring my Joey McIntyre pillowcase and get it signed? And he's like, oh yeah, so like I'm going to be at work and I'm going to go up to the table <laughs> to greet our celebrity guest and say, by the way, here's my wife's Joey McIntyre pillowcase. Can you sign it? So he wouldn't do it. Also, he was so nice to go and see them perform live with me. And we got room service before the show, and this the kid who brought up the room service was like, we all go into that concert tonight? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, I just went to some lady's room, and she had a sign that said, do me up against the Wahlberg. <laughs> 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 I said, we don't have any of those. Anyway, New Kids on the Block, hanging tough. Oh, this was my first concert. And my brother was jealous. I got to go see New Kids on the Block. So my parents taught, brought him to see Ninja Turtles on Ice. Cowabunga. No, no. you. <laughs> okay. Now I totally go see him. Like if they were still in this era. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like if I could travel back in time as my adult self, I'd in go back. DeLorean? And, yeah. I'd totally do it. I'd totally go see New Kids on the Block. You heard it here. I admitted it. Okay, last but not least, I had to switch from the norm a little bit. I had a really good friend, a really dear friend, uh, who I have lost contact with. 
that introduced me to this band, and this is the best album ever. This is Earth Crisis by Steel Pulse. Probably one, uh, as far as I'm concerned, their best album uh, to date. It, these guys were really, really into politics, and they're more so than probably any other reggae band that I've ever heard. Uh, most reggae bands are just about you know smoking weed and stuff, but these guys actually had an agenda. They had a lot to say about what was going on in the world, especially in the 80s. This came out in 84, you know, with nuclear power and things like that. I mean, they had a lot to say. So the social issues that they dealt with, it's just, and such a great band, and they're such nice guys. Uh, I had an opportunity to see them in Florida and for the first time, and it was incredible. And they were so good, and they were so nice. They, they did sort of like a meet and greet afterwards where they spoke to the fans and they're just so gracious and uh so i had to go with steel pulse earth crisis go check it out very grateful for that record so since uh <laughs> since i pulled five i have one more do it do it you think i should yeah absolutely so i'm about to get pretty serious about this uh, this isn't funny like okay. normally i'm funny and lighthearted, and that's not what this is so um <clears throat> so i picked sia Thousand Forms of Fear, and the reason why I picked this is there's a song I'm sure most of you have heard by Sia called Chandelier, and I didn't really know anything about Sia the first time I heard the song, but the song just spoke to me, and I started crying because I'm an empath and I cry, <laughs> and I really didn't understand why I started crying until I really started listening and dissecting the lyrics. And realized that the lyrics were all about her being a party girl and being addicted to drugs and alcohol. I, uh, I, I started reading the lyrics and they really touched me and really made me start thinking about how much I was drinking. And I ended up not drinking. I've been sober two years. So, um... Yeah, so I chose Sia because this record means a lot to me. So thanks for stopping by. That was three to five albums <laughs> <laughs> that we're thankful for. That's Good some record. records that we're thankful that those artists made. Yeah, so. Regardless of the count. <laughs> so thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we appreciate you watching our video. Thank you, guys. Love you. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Why am I here? Because you're here. Because albums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a hair on my tongue. <laughs> a hair on your tongue? Yeah. Uh, How'd that a, get there? That's a hairy it. tongue. Album. Album. See, I found it. It was a dog hair. Where did dog hair come from? Or a cat hair. Hello. What's up, peeps? Okay, we're recording, by the way. Oh, cool. Josh. Yay! So we have to, like, we have to. No. Right? You have to what? We, we have to watch our language. It's already are we, recording. Are we watching our language? Well, technically, we're not monetized yet. I know, but it's kind of... So be sure to subscribe. We can say whatever the beep we want. You're not demonetized yet? We're not demonized yet. We um, haven't been demonized. You gotta I get demonized on a regular basis. I'm basis. scooting so closer. Like, as close as you Ooh. can. <laughs> Touch me like that again. <laughs> no, I'm not children friendly. We are not child friendly, Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. On a cracker. Really? Oh, that's the... On a cracker? Jesus would you prefer a wafer? Welcome to Super Eat. <laughs> Y'all can't take nothing serious.